Hi, I'm Jeff from Bright Labs. We're going to be going over the video user manual for ChessUp. You've received your ChessUp. We're going to go over everything that's in the box. So unwrap the cellophane and let's get in there. The first thing you're going to receive is the ChessUp board itself. We're going to take that out. And underneath that, you have the white pieces, the black pieces, the charging cable, and you have a quick start sheet. And what this is going to do is give a QR code so you can link to download the app and get further instructions. And as a quick overview of the different buttons and interfaces on the device. When you first unbox your chest up, turn the switch on the side to turn the unit on. And let's check to see if it has a low battery. The low battery is indicated with a low battery icon in red, right by the night. If it has a low battery, the USB-C port is right there. Red blinking indicates that it is charging and a full red light on the side will indicate that it is fully charged. After it's charged for at least 15 minutes, we can continue on to the calibration. A full charge is going to take about two hours with the chest up. So after your chest up has had a chance to charge, you should be able to turn it on and there should be no low battery light. In the startup sequence, you're gonna see the two rows of the pieces go light up, no low battery. This means that we are good to calibrate the board. You will only need to calibrate one time and then the chest up should work great. It is best if you calibrate it on a flat surface and preferably where you're gonna use it the most. So I'm gonna hold both of these buttons for about three seconds. And then as soon as it enters the calibration mode, I'm gonna remove my hands. That's a signal to show you that it has calibrated and you should be good to go and enjoy your chest up now. So we're also going to do an optional plugged in calibration. If you plan on using your chest up while it's plugged in, which is a, you know, a great use case, we recommend doing the plugged in calibration as well. So with your charge cable from before, you're gonna need a power brick for your country and we're going to plug this chest up in. So for the plugged in calibration, we're gonna plug the board in. You will see it's successfully plugged in when the charge light is either solid red or blinking red to indicate that it's charging. And it's the same procedure. Hold down bu both buttons for about three seconds. Remove your hands when it enters the calibration mode and it'll let you know that's calibrated. You must do these calibrations in the order of the uh, unplugged calibration first, then the plugged in one. And once you've done that, good to go. Now I'm gonna go over setting up the chessboard for play. You have a set of 34 chess pieces in your chess up box. There's an extra queen for each side. We'll explain that in the gameplay later, what those are for. But you will set up your chessboard as follows. The white side is the side that has column or row one and row two here. The pawns go in row two. This is called a rank. So all of the white pawns start on the second rank and we will get this set up for you. And then your back rank, your rank one, is where all of your pieces go. These are rooks. These are knights. These are bishops. And then you have the king and the queen. And the easiest way to remember it is queen goes on our own color. So the white queen goes on the white square. Now we'll do the black side. This is the seventh rank. We're going to put all the black pawns there. You'll notice that the lights go out to indicate that it knows that there is a piece on the square. Again, we have rooks, knights, bishops, and then the king and the queen. And again, queen on her own color. So the black queen goes on black. And the board will light up, blink, to let you know that you have set it up correctly. Keep the spare queens to the side. They come into the game later. And I'm gonna show you now how to start a game. So there are several different ways to use chess up. The simplest is just turn it on, play a game of chess. We'll go over that right now. To see the legal moves for a piece, you simply just touch the piece or pick up the piece and it'll show you the moves for that piece. If you try to move a piece that has no legal moves, it'll just light up. Or if you touch the piece that is on the opponent's side, it'll also just light up and let you know that there are no moves for that piece. If a piece is missing, it'll also indicate that a piece is missing from that square with a purple light. So place that back. And we'll just make a couple moves to show you how the pieces handle here. One of the unique features of ChessUp is that it features an assisted play mode. And what that means is that there's an AI, a chess engine inside the board that's going to help you learn how to play. I'm gonna show you how to get to that mode. 
By tapping the settings button, you can cycle through several different modes. First is three levels of player. Then you have 12 levels of AI. We are gonna be using the assisted player mode and those are levels two or level three of the player mode. And what those do is when you touch a piece in this mode, you're actually going to see different colors on the board. Blue, green, and then red. So to explain the different colors, here we have a red move. A red move is a blunder. And the reason that that is a blunder is if you move here, you can lose that piece. And losing a bishop for a pawn is not a good exchange, so the assistant is helping you avoid blunders. Another subtle feature that I'm gonna go over is in level three assistance, when you're just using the board, there is an opening book. And what we mean by an opening book is we have taken the most common opening lines from Grandmaster level play, we have put that into the board so you can see what those are and follow those lines. If I set it to assistance level three, now when I touch a piece, I'm going to actually see green moves versus blue moves, and those green moves indicate a theoretical opening, meaning the preferred opening at the high levels of chess. And a great illustration of that is moving the knight right there is still in opening theory, while blue moves, while not bad, are not part of opening theory. Chessup also features an AI opponent. To set up the board so that you can play against the built-in AI, we're gonna set white to be actually uh, human level one, so it just highlights the legal moves for the player, and we're gonna set black to be the AI. If we get past the human levels, you can see that there is green levels of AI and blue levels of AI. There's six of each. The green are the easiest, the blue are the hardest. So I'm setting the AI to level 11 here. It's just five bars of blue. Make the move for the player, and there's the AI's response. It'll always be highlighted purple, which piece it wants you to move, and blue is gonna be where it wants you to move to. So we'll continue the game here, and the AI will respond in turn. You can continue the game playing against the embedded AI. Again, there are 12 different levels of built-in AI. Later in the game, you can reach a situation called promotion. Promotion is when a pawn makes it to the other end of the board. This is the black side, this is the white side. As you can see, black's pawns are almost to the final rank. When they make it there, they can promote into another piece. I'm gonna go over the different ways to promote. Most people promote a pawn to a queen, but it can turn into a queen, a rook, a bishop, or a knight. If you wanna turn it to a queen, it is very easy. Place the pawn in the final rank, replace it with the queen, and it is now a queen. I will show you that by touching the piece here, and it is simply a queen. The other thing you can do is you can underpromote. Underpromote is when you turn a pawn into a rook, a bishop, or a knight. So if you want to do that, as soon as you reach this square, you will see icons here. It starts with the queen. You can cycle it around to turn it into any other piece, and we're gonna turn it into a bishop. So if I leave the bishop light on and then place the bishop, it is now a bishop. And I'll show you that here, that it moves exactly like a bishop. So that's promotion to a bishop. The third thing to explain that is if I promote this pawn, and then let it sit there for a while, it will also auto queen. It'll time out in about three seconds, four seconds, and it'll turn into a queen. And it'll let you know that it turned it into a queen, and now this piece is a queen. So those are the different promotion scenarios. That covers defaulting to queen, under promotion, and also timing out on promotion. There are several different ways the game can end. One of the most common is checkmate, meaning that you are going to capture the enemy's king. I have a situation here, it's black's move. Black is up a lot of material, it has more pieces than white, and white's king is in danger. I'm gonna show you what happens at the end of the game when you checkmate. So here we're gonna move the black rook here. The king only has one escape square, and as we bring this queen down here, this is going to be checkmate. You will see that it highlights the king red, flashes green, this means that the black side won the game. That is a complete game. That game is actually recorded in the board. You can use the app to download it later. And we're gonna show you next how to reset the pieces. At any point during the game or after the game has ended, you can reset to a new game. To do that, we're just gonna put the pieces back to their starting squares of where they belong. And you need to remember that the white side has ranks one and two, the black side has ranks seven and eight. There are numbers beside the board here. These are also files and they're lettered A through H. And the key thing to remember is that the white queen goes on her own color. Rooks on the outside, we need to get rid of the extra queens off the board. Knights, Rook, and we'll speed through this, but we'll show you how to reset the board. You do not need to power off the board.
Okay, so when you place the final piece, the board recognizes that it's in the starting position and you can start a new game. You can access again the settings buttons to set it up as AI or human or assisted human. Other than checkmate, there's other ways that the game can end. Stalemate and draw. We're gonna go over what the board shows you when you enter a stalemate or a draw. A stalemate is when there are no legal moves for a person and they are not in check. That is considered a tie. A draw is entered by either repeating the same position three times or making 50 moves without progressing a pawn or a capture, or when you have too little material to result in a checkmate. So the easiest one to demonstrate here is to actually just show you the three-fold repetition, which is the name for when you repeat repeated position three times. So I'm just gonna move these knights back and forth, and when we repeat the position for the third time, the game is gonna show you the draw animation. You see blue and green, the kings both light up, that is a draw, it is a tie. While you're playing on chess up, you can undo a move. The only condition when you can't is if you're playing an online game. But if you are just using the board, undo is a feature. For instance, if I move this pawn out and decide I don't want to do that, I can move it back. And now we have returned to the same game position. You can also undo captures. The important thing to note here is that you must replace the captured piece to continue the game. After you've finished any game playing in standalone mode, it is actually stored in the board as long as you play that game to a stalemate, a draw, or to a checkmate. You can also do an advanced feature here, which is you can resign a game. And if you do a resign or an offered draw, it will also store the game. This is a little bit complicated, but if you take both the kings and we clear off the center of the board and we place them on the white and the black, that is a draw. And that game will save and you can start a new game. You can also do a resignation. And to show you what a resignation is really quick, is again, we're gonna remove the kings, we're gonna clear off the center of the board, and we're gonna say that black one, so we're gonna place them on the black squares. And now it's gonna light up green and show you that black one. While playing on chess up, I'm just gonna give you some proper handling instructions. Chess up is very tolerant to how you move pieces. Um, as long as you're holding the piece, it's not a finished move. If you let go in the wrong square, it's not a move. But as soon as you let go in the correct square, it is a move. You can slide pieces, you can pick up pieces. There's even ways that you can actually start another move before you finish this move, and that'll work. That's helpful for very fast situations. But to make sure that you have the best experience, I'm gonna show you the proper way to handle the pieces. While we allow different capturing modes, like push capturing, or capturing by picking it up and replacing the other one, the very best way to do this is to actually pick up the captured piece and then replace it with yours. That is the most bulletproof way to make a capture. Again, you can play anyway, but we recommend that way, especially if you're playing online rated games because you don't want a mistake to enter the board. So we went over all of the things you can do with the chess up by itself, but chess up also features an app and there's a lot more you can do with the app that includes reviewing your games, analyzing them, playing online games, keeping track of your friends and playing friendly matches. And we have lessons and puzzles on the way. So first of all, we're gonna go over how do you get the app? So to use the app of ChessUp, first we need to get the app. You can go to the Apple Store and search ChessUp, and coming soon in the Google, Andro Google Play Store is the Android version, again, search ChessUp. I will actually show you, we have a screen recording going, so you search ChessUp, this is our app with the Wing Knight icon. You can download it, and then it'll be available for you to use. There's also a quick start guide that comes with the board. You can scan that QR code from your phone or tablet and then that, at the top of the page that pulls up, you will be able to access our app in the App Store or the Google Play Store. I'm gonna talk through while you're watching the screen recording. There are some permissions that the app needs in order for ChessUp to work. And you can optionally let it send you notifications. This would be important if someone's gonna challenge you to the game when you're not using the app, but you could accept it. So you hit allow there. And then we need to choose how to sign in. Uh, I'm gonna sign in with Google. You can also create an account with us or use Facebook or Apple sign-in. And then as soon as you are in, the app is going to remember you and it should be no problem to launch the app again. The second thing is you need to say okay to allowing Bluetooth. And this is necessary because Bluetooth is the link between the board and the app. So I click okay. And from here, we're gonna go over a ton of features in the app, but this is the app launch screen. So one of the most popular features of App Connected Play is the assisted play using Stockfish as the chess AI. And that is the world's most powerful chess engine. So it's fun to play with it on your side, also fun to play against it as an opponent. 
right now I'm going through and I went to new game and I'm going to set the assistance up and this is again putting stockfish on my side. So I'm going to play as white and we're going to play the AI as well. There are different settings for the AI and we're going to start a game. And now the game is tracked on the phone, but you can also now just focus on the board. And as I touch pieces, you are going to see different colored hints. And these are extremely powerful hints because they're coming from a super grandmaster level chess engine. I'm playing against the AI. You'll see that the knight thinks and then it'll propose a move. And here is where you can see that I get blunders, I get okay moves, and green is the best move. So we'll make that move. The AI thinks the AI has moved. That is assisted play with the app uh, and also playing against the AI from the app. All these games will also be recorded and you just play them exactly like you would a standalone game. A very cool thing that we have is an automatic timer. We use the app, start a new game, and we're going to select a time game. I'm just gonna set it to be two human players with no assistance and we are going to play what is a blitz format, three minutes to start and a two second increment every time you make a move. So if we start this game, it's just like any other game, but now we're playing with clocks and I'm gonna pull up the clock screen and it's recording so you will overlay that. And you can see that as I touch and move, the clock is automatically changing turns and doing the increment. And you can play a very, very rapid game with two players over the board and an automatic clock. If the clock time runs out for any person, they lose the game, unless the opponent does not have enough material, but that's a very advanced thing. In general, it's a very fun way to play time games over the board and not even have to worry about touching the timer. Now we have an overlay of the app shown on the screen here. I'm just gonna go over some of the ways uh, to get around the app and navigate it. If you touch your profile there, you can get in and edit your profile. There's a section to add friends, a section to approve friend requests coming in, and then also through this app, you can access and set up your Lee Chess account, create an account or log into an account you already have. Lee Chess is a very popular online chess platform where you can play against millions of other players. So it's very nice if you wanna play online against a human to set up a Lee Chess account. And then that way you can get to their big player pool and find matches almost instantly. So if you do wanna play an online game, there are two ways to do it. One is on the Chess Up platform. And that would be where it's chess up users versus chess up users. And that allows you to actually do assisted games. However, if you wanna play online on a popular chess platform like Lee Chess, play a rated game, no assistance is allowed. I'm gonna show you how to launch one of those games. So we go to new game, we choose online match, and again, choose the Lee Chess platform. You can either select an opponent that is a friend or we can do a random game. And I'm gonna choose a color. It's important to remember if you choose random, that you need to be prepared to play from either side of the board, but I'll just choose white. I'm gonna play a rated game, and we're gonna set the time format to 5-5, which is a five minute start and a five second increment. And now I hit random game, and it's gonna search for an opponent, and it'll pull an opponent out of the lead chess player pool that's also looking for a game. And as soon as the game is launched, we'll be playing over the board. The app will also show you the time left in the game and show you the state of the game. So we've gotten a match. And now we're going, this is the Lee Chess match. And again, I don't need to concern myself with the app. I can just play over the board. When the opponent is, is thinking, you will see the winged knight light up and then you'll see their move light up. And again, now it's white's turn. So I make a move and wait for my opponent's reply. The clock is kept on the app. So when you're playing time formats, do be aware of the clock and the time left for your game. While you're playing on Lee Chess, you can continue the game or if you need to for any reasons, you can also resign the game by hitting the flag, offer a draw or resign, and it'll tell you the game has ended. When you play through checkmate or stalemate or draw, you'll also see a notification that the game has ended. You're free to reset your chess up board and to launch a new game. After you've completed games, whether you're playing online or playing over the board, the history of your game shows up here. You can view all of them, click on them to step through them. There will be an analysis function coming soon where you can actually see what was the suggested move versus the move you made. But every game is recorded, whether you played against the AI, another opponent, or played an online game, you can access that here. There's also a section where you can access by tapping your profile, you can see your friends and manage your friends list, or you can log out and also view your notifications. Notifications would be someone challenged you a game or invited you to be a friend. If you'd run into any problems or have a question that is not listed in this video, please reach out to us with our phone number, our website, or our email, all right here. And 
in the description, you can find the links.